Hey everyone, Jeff here, also known as the Revit Kid. Thank you for joining me today. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. Boom, right there. And also make sure you hit the notification bell so you know when new videos are posted as well as when I'm going live. Um, today is uh, sort of the next video on one of my continuing series that I'm calling the Community Quick Tip Series. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about when I say the community, um, what I'm talking about is the BIM After Dark community. And so for those of you that don't know, uh, on top of the YouTube channel and the blog, I also run a community called BIM After Dark. Within this community, there are a bunch of full length courses, um, like right here, BIM can be sexy, BIM can make paper, BIM can make families and DIY Dynamo. So we're talking about presentation techniques, documentation techniques, how to make families from scratch and then using Dynamo. But the other aspect of having the community beyond just office hours with myself is a community feed. And so what you can see here is this is the main community feed where people can ask questions. I ask questions sometimes. Um, members ask questions. Uh, myself and other members answer. Um, some really, really awesome content on here. Um, and it's kind of like social media, but without all of the noise. Phenomenal place to, to learn Revit, to level up your Revit skills, as well as meet other people in similar situations as yourself. But I also find it as a great place to learn um, sort of what areas people are struggling with in Revit. Um, and maybe some common questions. And that's what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take a question from here, a question from Reggie Holt, who is one of our members. Reggie, what's up, man? Um, and this is a cool question because I think it's something that is unique, but also shows the power of the community as well as hopefully showing you um, how to do something really neat in Revit. So Reggie asked a question about how to make um, on his note block schedule. So Reggie has annotated notes and he wants to be able to have a period after them when he makes a schedule, but not have the period in the note. Um, so as you can see, Reggie asked the question here. Um, we follow up with a couple, a uh, couple more questions, trying to figure out what he's talking about here. He gives you some examples, as you can see, his note legend for his demo notes. Um, they don't have a period after them because he doesn't want that in the actual note. Um, and so we we chit chat back and forth. Other members jump in. Paul jumps in. Chris jumps in. Um, Chris has a, a, a neat Dynamo workaround. But basically, uh, we come down to a solution, and I'm going to share that with you today. So thanks for the question, Reggie. Um, and let's dive into the uh, solution. So when it comes to uh, numbered notes or, or annotative objects and note blocks, I'm going to just show you quickly how that works. Um, so if for those of you that are not familiar, if I go under annotate and I click symbol, I have these things called plan notes here or demolition notes, depending on what you're using them for here. I'm just going to use them as plan notes. So what happens here is if I place this, you can see it's just a number one. And then I have one that's a number two and number three. And these are just notes, but they're nice because you can add them all over your plans, right? And within each one of these are generic notes. If I click them um, and I go to edit type, you could see that there is a property called number, a property called letter and a description for it. So what that means is now I can actually go to view schedules, note block, and I can create a note block using these. So I'm going to say, using my plan notes, you can see new note block. I can say note block two, click OK. And now I can add those parameters. So if I add my number and my description and click OK, you'll see I actually have a schedule now that represents my note blocks. And now that schedule, I can actually put on every single page. Let me zoom into it here. So you can see there's the number and there's the, the information. If I want, I can go down to sorting and grouping and turn off itemize every instance. After I sort by number. And so there you go. So what Reggie's saying is he wants this to be one dot. Okay. And two dot and three dot. The problem is, right, he doesn't want to see the dots here. If I went in here, I could say one, three dot. Um, although this is set as a number, so I can't, but I wouldn't want to see them here. So this is sort of the trick, the workaround. By default, you're looking at it and you're like, uh, well, I mean, shouldn't I just have the ability to put like a prefix or a suffix or something like that in the family? And the problem is, if I click here and I go into this family, this is a label. And if I go to edit label, <clears throat> I can add a suffix, but it's going to show up in my note. Right. And I don't want that suffix to be there in my notes. So I have to figure out a way to get my suffix there as a note. Believe it or not, if I go back into my project and I go to um, my fields for my schedule, there's this little thing here called combined parameters. And it, it seems silly because you're like, all right, it's just combining two parameters. But when you click it, 
you'll notice that it gives me a prefix and a suffix as an option. So I'm thinking to myself, well, that's kind of interesting. So just by adding something to combine parameters, now I can add a prefix and a suffix in the project environment. Okay, so so then how, how can I use this? Well, if you'll notice, I have a parameter. Let me go back into the family. If I go under family types, I have a parameter here called empty. So I made a, 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 a defined parameter within the family called empty. And guess what I'm going to do with that? I'm going to combine it now. I'm going to use it to create a combined parameter, but it's really just using Revit's, uh, Revit's uh, toolbox against them, basically. So if I go under fields and I say, okay, I'm going to make a combined parameter and it's going to be my number and my empty parameter. And why is that? Because you need to have two parameters for a combined parameter, right? So now my empty one, I'm going to get rid of the slash for the separator. They put a slash there. But then for my number, I'm going to put a period as my suffix. So now that's going to take whatever value you type in for the number, and it's going to add a period to it. And then it's going to add empty after it. But guess what? Empty is just nothing. There's nothing in that as long as you don't ever put anything in that. So if I click OK, now you can see I have one here called number.empty. I'm just going to move it up next to it so you can see. If I click OK, see this? Now it has a period after it. So if I go back into my fields, I can actually remove my number and just have number.empty. So I'm actually so I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave my numbers there and I'm gonna make it a hidden field because you have to sort by the numbers. So I'm putting numbers back, I'm sorting, and I'm gonna make I'm gonna make my numbers a hidden field. And click OK. And now there we go. Okay. So I have numbers there, and when they change, they're going to update. But now my number.empty, you can call it whatever you want, that actually has the, the suffix after it. So pretty cool. So what am I doing there? It's pretty simple. I have my parameter in my family. I added an empty parameter. And then in the schedule environment now, I'm actually able to create a suffix. So there you have it. Pretty cool, right? Just something simple, a quick, quick tip. Um, that could be used probably for a lot of different things if you really think about it, that idea of using suffix and prefixes and whatnot. But now you can use them in your schedules without having to mess with the label and the family and all of that craziness. And you don't have to have that little period in your note, right? If I jump back into the screen real quickly, notice these don't have the, the, the little period after them, but on my sheet blocks, now they do. So you get to control them through your notes. You get to control them the way you want but you don't have to affect your actual family or annotations. So Reggie, thank you for the question. For those of you interested, remember, head on over to community.bimafterdark.com. Thank you for joining me today. Love you all. See you soon.